All right, everybody, Mike Kelly again from animatorsforum.com. And what I, one of the users asked me to show how I constructed my height chart. I use a, a height chart that I bring in to um, align all the characters so that they all have a consistent height. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I, my project settings are set for my default settings. I mean, they are, but it's possible that I could have changed them. So this is my default. I always work in the uh, 72, 720p setting. So that's set properly. And then I'm also going to make sure that my camera setting is at 60. So that's the, that's the default camera position. And uh, also that's the default uh, translation position of the camera. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a rectangle. And I'm going to make sure that auto fill is turned off because I just want the stroke of the rectangle. I'm going to go ahead and do that and drag that out real quick to the, the length of the screen because that's the the uh, amount that I'm going to be doing it by. And I also, while I'm at it, I might want to make the line a little thicker. So I'm going to make it a little thicker. And so now I'm going to go into the scripts. This is a built-in script that you guys have used called Split Curve. And basically what it does is it makes more points to any particular uh, curve that you have selected. In this case, I have that rectangle selected. And what I want to do is I want to have uh, seven foot di divisions, okay? So the top division is going to be the seven foot. And of course, uh, it's going to go, you know, one to seven. Well, that would mean that I would actually need, um, because you count the bottom as, as one there, and then the top is eight. So there'd be eight divisions, but I already have two. So I'm going to... I'm going to split it into six. Does that make sense? You're going, to, you're going to put in here one less than the total number of height positions that you need. You'll see how that works. So now that's, that's split the curve into points. I'm going to go to my particular tool. You can use add point, but my, my tool allows me to just add points as do as well other things. So I'm going ahead and I'm clicking on the first point on one side and then dragging it over and that just automatically hooks into that. Do the same thing with add point, like I say, and it's, it'll auto connect if you've got the auto connect turned on, which I do in my tool, so that it auto joins there. Maybe I guess I turn it on add point so you can see. As long as it has auto weld turned on, auto point is the same thing. So I'm going there, and you can see it turns green when it gets over that point, so you know you're there. So that's auto point. So now I have all of those connected, so now I want to create shapes out of those. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of those. And then I'm going to do the uh, shape uh, connect, which is U. That's that create shape there, right? See, right there, create shape. And then the space bar. And now that created all my shapes. So you can see if I if I render that, and now I have the shapes. And it it went ahead automatically and built them as the same width as the default width, which I had already had set. So um, so now I've got my basic chart. So now I want to generate the uh, the designations for it. I pick a suitable font. I've got different fonts here, you know, that you can have whatever, whatever you feel suits suits your uh, particular desire. And start off with one, and that's one. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, adjust that. I'm using the text tool. And the reason I want to use the text tool, you'll see in a moment, is that I want to be able to copy and then just adjust the text that I'm using. So there's the one foot mark. So now I'm going to just duplicate that layer. A whole bunch of times. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm going to go into each layer and change the name. Although I don't really need to. I mean, I can leave the name the same for the purposes of this, but I'll go ahead and change it just to be <laughs> just to be complete on this. Uh, two, and then uh, I'm going to drag up that next layer up to there. And I'm not I'm not going to do all of these, but I think you can see. As a matter of fact, I'll show you one that I won't I won't change the name. You can actually have duplicate names in Anime Studio and it really won't spit up on you, and et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, I'll do that all the way up to seven. And the last the last one I do, which would be seven here, would be, I would put there, up there, at the very last, right up here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I would do one more thing. I'm going to create a group layer. And uh, this particular group I'll call like height chart or something. And I want to drag and put all of these under that group. And the reason I want to do that is if I left them alone as, as single layers and then you brought them in, you'd have them all as single layers. You really don't want that. You want to, you want one height chart group so that you can easily use it uh, with your characters and then easily just delete that one layer. So, uh, and I'll show you the completed product as if I was, so if I was going to do new without this, and then I was going to, um, let's say, 
let's say I'm going to generate a new character. And so the first thing I would do probably would bring in an image to work from. I don't know what images I have here, um, but let's pretend that I have uh, an image here that I'm going to work from. This isn't uh, exactly the the best image in the world to work from, but let's let's say I'm going to create this character here. And uh, my uncle actually drew these Mars Man characters. My late uncle was quite an artist. He was he was really brilliant in his own time. So if I were going to do that character, and I might go, gee, you know, there's a good reference for that character. And but now I need to know what what height I want to do for that character. So I'm gonna I'm going to import an Anime Studio object of which that is the object. And if I go to uh, the construction, then I can bring the height chart in. And the nice thing about the height chart is because it's it is vector, but because it's got a transparent background, you see it overlays nicely on here. So now I can I can actually go to the, uh, the the JPEG image and say, oh well, this guy should be. Let's see, he should be, I don't know, five feet tall. Maybe I'll maybe I'll say he's only four feet tall. You know, so I could adjust him get him down to about four feet and so that will be now where I will create that character at that height and usually after I've adjusted the height then I'm gonna get rid of the height chart don't need the height chart anymore and I'm also going to then center that character and now I'll start creating the character on the various layers and doing my various magic of drawing that so that's how I create and use the height chart and I recommend that you do something similar if you want to get some consistency among your characters. The nice thing about that is if you create them all and you leave your layers all zeroed out and they're not zoomed in and they're not scaled or anything, then all your characters when you bring them in will have a consistent height. And then if you do need to make them bigger or smaller, if they're, they're bigger to the camera or further away from the camera, if they're smaller, uh, you can do that on layers, but that way at least you have some consistency when they come in at the same uh, distance. So that's all. So hopefully we'll see you at anime, anime, animatorsforum.com with Anime Studio.